Here is an equation that looks deceptively simple. If you try the standard brute force approach, squaring both sides, you will get a fourth degree equation, which is very messy and hard to solve. Instead, let's find a more elegant path by uncovering its hidden structure. If we plot the left and right sides as two separate functions, we see they intersect at two points. Notice the domain restrictions. For the square root to make sense, the variable x must be less than or equal to 5. For the other side, 5 minus x squared must be greater than or equal to 0. So the variable x must be between negative square root of 5 and positive square root of 5. This tells us to expect two real solutions within these domains. Our mission is to find their exact values. The standard approach leads to a dead end. Let's rewind and try a more clever strategy using substitution, looking for symmetry in the equation. Back to the start. The structure of the equation itself holds the clue. Notice how both sides involve the variable x in a similar way. This hints at symmetry. We'll call this new variable y. Since y equals the square root of 5 minus x, we must have 5 minus x greater than or equal to 0, and y greater than or equal to 0. This gives us y squared equals 5 minus x. And by rearranging, we get our first equation. The variable x equals 5 minus y squared. Notice the symmetry. If we swap x and y, the form is similar. This gives us our second equation, y equals 5 minus x squared. Again, symmetry. Swapping x and y in either equation gives the other. Now we have a system of two equations. Notice their beautiful symmetry. Each expresses one variable in terms of the other in the same form. The first equation expresses the variable x in terms of y. The second expresses y in terms of the variable x. This symmetry suggests a powerful technique. Subtract one equation from the other. This often eliminates terms and reveals a simpler relationship. Remember, any manipulation must respect the domains of x and y. Let's subtract the second equation from the first. The fives on the right side cancel out leaving us with this much cleaner relationship. Notice this is a difference of squares, which can be factored. Factoring gives us x minus y equals the quantity x minus y times the quantity x plus y. If x is not equal to y, we can divide both sides by x minus y. If x equals y, that's one case. Factoring out the common term leaves us with this. By the zero product property, Either x minus y equals 0 or x plus y minus 1 equals 0. This is the breakthrough. For this product to be 0, one of the two factors must be 0. We'll solve both cases, but remember to check for extra solutions due to earlier squaring. This splits our single problem into two much simpler cases. Case 1 is when x minus y equals 0. Case 2 is when x plus y minus 1 equals 0. Let's solve each one and check validity. First, let's explore case 1, which simplifies to y equals x. Let's consider our second equation from the system, y equals 5 minus x squared. We'll substitute y a bar x into this equation. Replacing i with x gives us a simple quadratic equation. First, we add x squared to both sides. Then we subtract 5 from both sides. This doesn't factor nicely, so we'll use the quadratic formula to find the exact solutions. Remember, we'll need to check which solutions are valid for the original equation. Plugging in a equals 1, b equals 1, and c equals negative 5. First, we simplify the terms inside the square root, which gives us our two potential solutions from case 1. Crucially, we must check if these solutions are valid. Not all solutions we find will work in the original equation, especially after squaring. Remember, our original equation has constraints.
This implies that x must be between negative square root of 5 and positive square root of 5. Let's check our solutions against these constraints. Back to our potential solutions from case 1. We need to check if these values fall within our valid domain. This solution is approximately 1.79. Since the square root of 5 is about 2.24, this value is inside our valid domain. Direct substitution confirms it solves the original equation. We've found our first real solution. Now we return to our second potential solution from case 1. This one is approximately negative 2.79. This is outside our valid domain, so it's an extraneous solution. Now we analyze the second case, where x plus y minus 1 equals 0. This means y equals 1 minus x. Now consider our second equation from the system, y equals 5 minus x squared. We'll substitute y, or sino x, into this equation. This gives us 1 minus x equals 5 minus x squared. First, let's add x squared to both sides of the equation. Now, we'll reorder the terms on the left to match the standard quadratic form. Finally, we subtract 5 from both sides to set the equation to 0. This quadratic does not factor with integers, so we must once again turn to the quadratic formula. We apply the quadratic formula with a equals 1, b equals negative 1, and c equals negative 4. Simplifying inside the radical, this gives us two more potential solutions. This is approximately 2.56. This falls outside our valid domain, so it is also extraneous. Now let's check the second potential solution from case 2. We get approximately negative 1.56. This value is safely inside our domain. Direct substitution confirms it solves the original equation. This is our second valid solution. We have found our second and final real solution. Let's summarize our findings. We found two valid solutions by using symmetry and careful domain checks. Each solution corresponds to an intersection point of the two curves. After navigating through a potential quartic trap, we used symmetry to find the two true solutions to the equation. These solutions are not just algebraic, they are the exact x values where the two curves intersect. When we return to our graph, we see that the exact values we found correspond perfectly to the intersection points we saw at the very beginning. This beautifully connects algebra and geometry. Thank you for joining me on this journey through a seemingly simple equation that revealed its true complexity. Remember, mathematics is not just about numbers, it's about finding patterns and connections. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more mathematical explorations.